Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Tell me if you relate. If you are a woman over the age of say 30, you've likely looked in the mirror and despaired at your changing face. When did that line pop up? Is my face beginning to droop? Is my nose growing larger? Will Botox fix these wrinkles? Will filler make me look younger? And there is a problem with aging all right, but it's not you. The problem is we live in a culture that is bloody obsessed with youth. Skincare companies use women in their 20s to advertise their anti-wrinkle creams. Movies will often feature an older man as the star, but his love interest will be 20 years younger. Do you guys remember when Maggie Gyllenhaal was told that she was too old at the age of 37 to play the love interest of a man in his 50s? Then there's the sad tale as old as time of men leaving their wives for the younger model, all of which can leave women of a certain age feeling not only scared, but utterly miserable at the prospect of aging. And so we find ourselves doing everything in our power to slow it down and stop it spending a small fortune on expensive skincare items that promise to hold back the hand of time. Paying a surgeon good money to cut off our face only to stitch it back on again, but tighter. <laughs> Some would even resort to eating poo on the daily if it meant they could stay looking younger for longer. But as seems to be the case with women in general in current day society, we just can't win. <laughs> Get a bunch of cosmetic procedures to stay looking young? You'll be ridiculed. Wear the same clothes that you did when you were younger because you feel good in them? Mutton dressed as lamb. Age gracefully and allow your wrinkles to take over? You've let yourself go. So despite the fact that we can't really win in this whole aging game, it doesn't stop us trying. And I get it, like I'm turning 35 next month. And I have absolutely noticed a few lines here and there popping up. Like when I smile, I have these weak eyes. When I raise my eyebrows, I have these lines. In fact, when I'm not raising my eyebrows, I still have those lines now, which is new. The sponsor of today's video, which I'm really proud to announce, is the Intamina Kegel Smart 2. For some reason, women's intimate health is rarely discussed out in the open, seen as shameful, embarrassing. There is some strange stigma attached to it, but there shouldn't be. The Intamina Kegel Smart 2 is a smart device designed to help women regain control of their pelvic floor health, which is vital to the entire health of your body. We are holistic beings. Signs that your pelvic floor may need a little TLC would include incontinence, pelvic floor discomfort, sexual dysfunction, or prolapse. There are many reasons why a woman might have pelvic floor weakness, namely pregnancy, childbirth, and age. As we age, our pelvic floor muscles, just like the muscles in the rest of our body, become weaker if we don't strengthen them. I know myself having now carried two huge babies in my small-ish frame, my pelvic floor has taken a bit of a beating. Just the simple fact of carrying your baby inside your body during pregnancy puts an awful lot of strain on your pelvic floor. And that's why it's so important to rebuild the strength of your pelvic floor afterwards. The Intamina Kegel Smart 2 is aiming to empower and educate women on how to rebuild their pelvic floor strength in just five easy minutes a day. We've likely all heard that we should be doing Kegel exercises to strengthen our pelvic floor, but it's one thing to know we should be doing it and quite another to actually do it. How long do we do it for? How do you actually do it? Is it even working? And this is where the Kegel Smart 2 comes in. This device helps women to easily do her Kegel exercises without thinking about it. The Kegel Smart 2 registers your pelvic strength and automatically sets the exercise level to suit. The vibratory stimulation can help improve pelvic floor muscle strength and help with conditions such such as stress incontinence and aid in your recovery after childbirth. The Kegel Smart 2 is made from 100% body safe medical grade silicone and is also rechargeable and at an affordable price. What's interesting is that a clinical study conducted on 49 women shows proven efficacy of the pelvic floor muscles in just 12 weeks of proper use. So if you, like me, feel like your pelvic floor could do with a little TLC, or perhaps you are preparing for a healthy pregnancy, or you want to regain your pelvic floor strength after childbirth, or you're heading into your wise woman years and you feel like your pelvic floor muscles could do with the same amount of love and care as the rest of the muscles in your body, then you can check out Intamina's website. I will pop it in the description box down below and you can explore the Kegel Smart 2 and learn more about it. Females these days are so terrified at the thought of aging that teenagers on TikTok as young as 13 are getting Botox to prevent wrinkles. Yes, you heard that right. Let that sink in. When I was a teenager, I was teasing my hair and trying to be a rock star and wondering what I should wear to the party on the weekend. I wasn't heading off to my cosmetic injector asking him to inject my face with Botox to prevent wrinkles. What the f***? 
According to the dermatologist Dr. Nick Lowe, girls as young as the age of 13 are lining up to get Botox to avoid getting wrinkles. In an article for the Guardian newspaper, he says, we're seeing body dysmorphic syndromes and a terrible loss of self-confidence. They are convinced that looking like a celebrity is going to make them happier and more successful. How concerning is that? Like our fear of aging is so rampant that even teenagers are feeling the need to stop the aging process. How's this for crazy? In 2010, the then 18-year-old singer Sharice Pem Pengo confessed to undergoing Botox and a skin tightening treatment called Thermage because she'd landed a role on the hit TV show Glee. And she wanted, get this, this is an 18 year old, she wanted to look fresh when she appeared before the camera. The thing is, women have been trying since the dawn of time to prevent aging. Not men women. We've really had it rough. Unlike men who are praised for aging like fine wine, women are portrayed as cronies, witches, and decrepit once they're over a certain age. And so we've come up with various creative ways to slow down the aging process, such as placing thin slices of meat on our faces, like in Elizabethan times, or bathing in donkey milk, like Cleopatra. Mixing snail slime into anti-wrinkle creams, that's actually a modern invention. That's wild. Now, I don't blame any woman for trying to halt the aging process. As women, the general consensus in society is that as our age increases, our worth diminishes. We're told to sit down, shut up, and just fade away quietly. And that's not a great message. There are plenty of women over a certain age who don't want to sit down, they don't want to shut up, and they certainly don't want to fade away into obscurity. And this is when some women will resort to such things as anti-aging procedures, facelifts, Botox, injections, filler, implants. But does any of it really work? Do any of these procedures actually halt the ravages of time? Can these treatments actually stop the aging process and make us look young forever? Or on the flip side, do we just end up looking like caricatures of our former selves? Courtney Cox, Meg Ryan, Priscilla Presley, Melanie Griffith, Kim Bassinger, Lara Flynn Boyle, Tori Spelling, Donatella Versace, Goldie Horn. These women, once praised for being beauties of their generation, are now ridiculed for the work that they've had done. Look at Madonna, for example. She is 64, extremely successful, extremely talented, extremely beautiful naturally with her Italian heritage. Now, considering she is a woman and she is famous, she is expected not to age. And that is a heck of a lot of pressure to put on someone who is not God and does not control time or the aging process. And so, like most famous women, Madonna started experimenting with anti-aging procedures such as filler and Botox. And let's be honest, she looked amazing. She looked her age and she looked bloody gorgeous. But there comes a point when such anti-aging procedures stop having the same effect and then you can find yourself resorting to even more dramatic means of staying youthful and simply injecting more and more Botox and, and more filler. It just doesn't achieve the same effect anymore. And so like Madonna, you end up looking like a totally different version of yourself, not even necessarily younger just different. I watched a news article on Madonna and one comment in the comment section really stuck out to me and it said, she's too proud to admit that graciously accepting a few wrinkles is better than looking like an alien because you filled yourself with Botox. So she deflects accusing others of hating her because she's a woman or because she's old when she's being made fun of for ruining her looks worse than time itself could. And this commenter is not the only one that thinks that Madonna has taken it too far. Piers Morgan, love him or hate him, took real offense, I don't know why, to Madonna has changed look and called her an embarrassing shambles. You know, watching someone in their 60s behaving like that, we've got this other little hit and miss. Yeah, these are some of her greatest hits. Yeah, one under the bed, <laughs> rock bottom. <laughs> oh, dear, oh dear. Gone to the dogs, quite literally there with the old dog bowl. All right, we, I think we'll spare the viewers any more of this. But in her case, I find her behaviour for a woman in her 60s just utterly embarrassing. I mean, if that was my mother or well, grandmother you're, you're, or something, you'd be, like, cringing. Can't she go and do the equivalent of a pipe and slippers? Just go and, you know, put on a lot of clothing, no. go and sit in a rocking chair and just do the old hits from a chair. You're saying, you when, when you're a, young and you beautiful, I don't mind seeing... You can't be in your 60s. But why can't you? I'm saying, she <laughs> has every right to do that, but I'm more interested in why you think, because she's an older lady, it's not attractive. Now, call me a prude, but I don't really care to watch anyone acting like this on social media. It's just not really my jam. It kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies. But I don't believe that Madonna's age has anything to do with it. She doesn't actually need Piers' permission, nor mine, to do whatever the hell she wants, whatever age she is. And actually, Piers, you can absolutely be a sexpot in your 60s. Repeat after me. 
Women are not products. We do not have a best before date. We do not expire and we can do whatever the hell we want despite how long we've been alive. Now, I am not going to comment on whether I think she looks good with her tweakments or whether I think she should have aged gracefully because I think in the case of Madonna, she has always been a bit of a provocateur. Reinventing herself has been her thing since she became famous in the 80s and I think she is in complete control of her new look. I don't think it's an accident and I think she's doing it to challenge societal norms that tell women you must show shut up and sit down and go away quietly after a certain age. Now, I don't know about you guys, but to me, it looks like Madonna is saying a big f*** you to ageism. She's loud, she's proud, and she's using her body and her face almost like performative art. I think she's trying to make a point. I love that some women are choosing to rebel against society's rules. They are refusing to age gracefully like they've been told to do and are instead determined to age disgracefully. The thing is, and this is what society doesn't seem to get, just because you are over a certain age does not mean that you are any less successful, any less beautiful, any less worthy, or any less thriving. In saying that, I don't necessarily think that that means you have to go down the cosmetic surgery route. I also don't think that going down the cosmetic surgery route is the answer to protest against ageism. In fact, in some ways, it's almost like we're giving in to the pressure and giving in to the discrimination by undergoing these procedures to look younger. Like what is so good about looking young? Like personally, from my perspective, I've been there. I've been young. And to be honest, I didn't even enjoy it that much. Now I want to be my best self, but older. And I want to make it abundantly clear that I am not against fillers and Botox. Heck, I've had them done myself when I was in my 20s. I am 27, by the way. I'm not a young person, so I think that I can get Botox if I want Botox. I can get Botox because I'm 27 and I'm almost 30. When I was 27, I was so concerned about getting older that I had Botox in my non-existent wrinkles and I had filler and I had the anti-aging skincare and now I'm like... I don't do any of that. I think as a woman over a certain age, if you are considering going down the cosmetic surgery route, go for it. There's just a few things to be aware of. Injections such as filler and Botox, they can make you look younger temporarily, but they are not permanent. And so they will start to wear off and inevitably you'll have to keep getting more and more and more, but it won't give you the same effect. And that can have huge ramifications on your self-confidence as a woman, because instead of looking younger, you're looking older and like you've had work done. Take Courtney Cox, for example. Courtney is one of those women blessed with a classically beautiful face. But she, like a lot of other famous women, began feeling the pressure to stay looking youthful. So in order to stay pretty, to obtain acting roles, to stay relevant, she had to keep getting more filler and more injections and more Botox to maintain her looks. And suddenly she just didn't really look like herself anymore. And she says she majorly regretted it. Thinking I was getting older when I was really young. That's just a bummer, a waste of time. It's a domino effect. It's like you don't realize that you look a little off. So then you keep doing more because you look normal to yourself and you look in the mirror and go, oh, oh, that looks good. You think, and you don't realize what it looks like to the outside person and just doing too many fillers. Thank God they are removable. But I think I've messed, I messed up a lot. And now luckily I can, you know, I was able to reverse most of that. And now I'm actually just older. Then we have Gwen Stefani, who has been alive for 53 years, and she is another who is refusing to age gracefully and has instead utilized Botox, fillers, and potentially even a facelift or three, depending on who you ask, to slow down the aging process. And I, for one, think she looks beautiful. But the problem is with all these procedures, you do start to lose a bit of your unique sparkle, like a little bit of what made you look like you to begin with. And it's a bit of a shame. It's like, is aging that terrifying of a prospect that you will do whatever you can to maintain your youth? for looks, even if it means erasing what made you look original to begin with, that you're so determined to hold on to your youth that you don't even give yourself the chance to see how gorgeous you could look as your older self. It's so easy to fall into the trap of youth equals beauty. Beauty equals worthy. But it's simply not the case. Sure, you can look great in your youth, but you can look just as hot as your older version too. And you are still just as worthy of love and success and happiness as you were when you were younger. Don't believe me? Look at Helen Mirren. I challenge anyone to tell me that this is not a prime example of a stunner. Some have even argued that Helen Mirren is now hotter in her 70s than she was in her 20s. And she was a babe in her youth, but she is a knockout now. Then we have Maria Doyle Kennedy, who at 58 years young is drop dead gorgeous. And just like Helen, she is just as beautiful now as she was when she was younger. She's still getting acting roles. She's not sitting in a corner quietly knitting a patchwork quilt. She's working. She's creating. She is thriving. Pamela Anderson, my personal favorite, bloody love her. She is someone who has basically made a whole career out of the fact that she is a babe. And I think a lot of people expected Pamela to delve into the crazy world of facelifts and injections and fillers and Botox and the Madonna route. But Pamela has shocked people 
by doing the opposite, by doing nothing. You recently said that you're you're not afraid of getting older, that you even can't wait to see yourself old. Tell us about that mentality. I love it so much. Um, but especially you're in, you were, you grew up in a career so focused on appearance and all that. What's your advice to women who can't get there? You got to, because you mean, it, you gotta just accept it's gonna happen no matter what, we're gonna get old. So I wanna embrace it. I feel like it's kind of an experiment. It's kind of funny. I look at myself sometimes and go, yeah, you look kind of funny. <laughs> like, what happened to you? <laughs> but you have to just think, you know, just embrace it. I mean, I, I always said I'd recognize myself when I was older. I said, when I'm really old, like, you know, I love older people and I have great friends who are older. And I think, you know, when you look in the mirror and you see all that life on your face and you see that it's, it's You've earned it. I know the majority of you guys that watch my channel are around my age and older. And so I want to leave you with this. If you have been struggling with the thought of aging and you find yourself wanting to delve into the crazy, weird and wonderful world of anti-aging procedures because you fear aging and you fear what you will look like as you age, I want to leave you with this. Aging is not a curse. On the contrary, aging is a blessing. There's a phrase that says age is a privilege that is denied to many and it is so true. If you're lucky enough to look in the mirror and see the older version of yourself looking back at you, then you'll know that you are one of the lucky ones. You've made it. You've got to see yourself looking young and you've got to see yourself looking old. How cool is that? Those lines on your face are not a sign of decrepitude. Those lines, my friend, are a sign that you have lived. You don't need to erase them and you don't need to stay looking 25 forever. How bloody boring. Contrary to popular belief, beauty doesn't doesn't actually have an age limit. You can live your best life at the age of 80 just as well as you can at the age of 20 and you don't need to hand over your best kidney to a plastic surgeon to do so.